Hello everyone, uh, thank you for joining. I am Jamal Arif and I am part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. Uh, in this session we will talk about a load balancer service on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. This is a level 200 course uh, and there is already a level 100 uh, course on load balancer where we talk about the basics of the load balancer service and how do you create a load balancer, uh, what are the different types of load balancer available. In this course we'll uh, move forward and build on top of the level 100 course that we already have. So it's recommended that if you haven't taken the level 100 course, uh, please just go through that uh, video uh, and then you can take uh, this load balancer course as well. Here is our safe harbor statement. I'll just give you a minute to go through the statement. All right. So within this uh, course, uh, within this video, you will talk about uh, the load balancer SSL support uh, and also discuss some additional topics of session persistence and virtual host name and path based routing on the OCI load balancer service. So session persistence is, uh, is a method where uh, you can direct all the requests which are originating from a single logical client uh, to a single backend server. Uh, this can be useful if your backend servers are significantly caching uh, or for instance like login sessions or shop shopping carts. Uh, you can also use this uh, such kind of method to improve the performance. Uh, so you can set the session persistence on the OCI load balancer as well. Uh, within the OCI load balancer, as you know that from a previous session, there are two types of uh, load balancers. You have the TCP mode and the HTTP mode. For the session persistent to work, the OCI load balancers must be in the HTTP mode. Uh, and within the OCI uh, session, uh, within the session persistence, uh, we specifically allow server-side cookie-driven session persistent method. Uh, if the uh, like the clients are not enabled to accept the cookies, uh, the session persistent is not enabled in that case. Then. All right, so. Uh, the session persistence is a feature which can be configured uh, and enabled on the level of the backend set. So when you create a backend set, uh, it gives you an option of uh, two parameters that whether it you have you are enabling session persistence uh, and then what is the cookie name and the fallback. Within the cookie name, you define the name of your cookie or you can have a match all pattern uh, as well. Uh, in case of match all pattern, any cookie that is set uh, by the backend server, uh, we'll uh, the, the OCI per, uh, load balancer would uh, start doing session persistence in that case. Uh, a fallback is a, is a value that actually controls how OCI load balancer handles session persistence requests in case the original backing server isn't available anymore. So the load balancing service uh, activates a session persistence when a backend server sends a set cookie response header containing a recognized cookie name. Uh, the cookie name must match the name specified in the backend, uh, backend set configuration. And if the configuration specifies a match all pattern, then any cookie set by the service activates the session persistence. Unless a backend server activates session persistence, uh, the service would just follow the load balancing policy specified when you created the load balancer. So any of the uh, three policies that we support, uh, load hashing, uh, round robin, uh, or source IP based. The client computer uh, must also accept cookies for load balancing session persistent feature to work. The load balancing service uh, calculates the hash of the configured cookie and the other parameters and sends that value to the client in a cookie. The value stored in the cookie enables the service to route all the subsequent client requests to the correct backend server. So if your backend servers uh, change any of the defined cookies, the service would recompute the cookies value and resend it to the client. So until one of the backend server uh, activates the session persistent, uh, we'll, the OCI load balancer would just continue using the configured load balancing mechanisms. Uh, so what happens when the backend server becomes unavailable? The fallback parameter in the session persistence controls it. If you set the fallback parameter to true, uh, the OCI load balancer would pick a different server from the backend set uh, and redirects the session to that server. If the value is set to false, the load balancer will fail the request and send an HTTP code 502. So when you have, once you have created the uh, session persistent, 
how do you stop persisting that particular session uh, so in that case the backend server uh, must delete the session persistent cookie uh, if you use the match all pattern then it uh, must delete all the cookies in that case uh, you can delete cookies by sending a set cookie response header with a past expiration date and once the once the cookie is deleted then the load balancing server will route the subsequent request using the configured load balancing policy so whichever policy that you have configured round robin least open connections etc uh, the load balancer will use that all right so in uh, request routing feature is a feature which allows you to uh, route your traffic based on certain request parameters uh, there are two types of uh, feature uh, like route request routing features available uh, you have the virtual host name where you can provide a host name and the and whichever host name it matches and then route it routes based upon that host name match uh, you can also do path routing where uh, the, there are there is a certain path that you want to, uh, uh, that you uh, that you want to route your traffic based upon that path uh, and you can also do path routing in that case uh, the both the features only work with http http and https listeners uh, they don't work with the tcp listeners so let's uh, talk about virtual host names so within the uh, virtual hostname feature, you can assign uh, host names to your OCI load balancer listener. Uh, each hostname can then correspond to an application served uh, from your backend servers. Uh, we normally see that uh, the enterprises uh, use a single load balancer to host multiple applications, and then each different application is identified by a hostname which is attached to it. Uh, so some of the advantages for this use case uh, are around that if you use a uh, if if there are multiple uh, applications which are associated with a single IP address, uh, this makes easier for uh, network ACL ACL configurations as well. Uh, there are number of different bandwidth chips available within OCI. Uh, so you have a you, you 400 meg, and then you can go up to 800 uh, gig as well bandwidth load balancers. So you can uh, utilize your load balancer in a much better way if you have multiple different applications being served. Uh, by a single uh, by a single load balance load balancer, you can uh, share your backends and definition uh, together, so it makes administration of your backend servers uh, easy. Uh, and without the virtual host names, you would have to create multiple uh, load balancers for each application. Uh, so this uh, makes it operationally uh, much cleaner if you use virtual host names uh, within a single load balancer. So within virtual uh, host names, you can define uh, either an exact virtual host name. Uh, so just the first example where you are doing exact matching. So you can define an exact virtual host name or you can use a wildcard name. So you can either use a longest wildcard starting with an aesthetic uh, or you can use the longest wildcard ending with an aesthetic. When searching for a virtual host name, uh, the service chooses the first matching variant. In the in in the priority in the in the priority order that is listed below, uh, we, as we talked earlier, the virtual host names feature supports the HTTP and the HTTPS listeners, uh, but not the TCP listeners. Uh, and you attach a virtual host name uh, when you create a listener. Uh, so before creating a listener, just create uh, the virtual host names that you have, and then when you create a listener, you can attach your uh, virtual host names to individual listeners. You can attach a maximum of 16 virtual host name to an individual uh, uh, TCP, uh, to an individual listener, uh, and as you all know that from a listener perspective, you can have maximum of 16 listeners within uh, OCI load balancer. We also don't support uh, the regular expression, uh, so the no regular expressions are allowed. If a listener has no virtual host name specified, uh, that listener is the default uh, for the assigned port. And if all listeners uh, on a port have uh, virtual host names, the first virtual host name configured for that port uh, serves as the default listener. So another uh, feature of for request routing is the path routing. In a lot of situations where your applications are serving different type of content, uh, and those content types are differentiated by a different distinct path. So uh, what the what the application requires is that for each different path, the traffic is routed or the load balancer routes that traffic to a different backend server because there are different servers which are serving the content on the, on the same application. So without the path-based path -based routing, uh, there are a couple of workarounds that you can do. 
So one would be that you create different listeners uh, and each listener then would have to be on a different uh, port as well uh, and it can route the traffic to a different backend set. The other option can be that just to create different load balancers for the different type of content that you are serving. Although these are the workarounds, but both of them don't are not suitable uh, workarounds because they uh, require your clients to hit different endpoints. Uh, either it's a different port in case of a listener or if it's a different load balancer in case of just using a separate load balancer. The best way to uh, like work uh, for such kind of use case is to use a path route. So a path route is a string uh, that the load balancer would match against an incoming URL and it would determine based upon that matching that which particular backend set is uh, is appropriate and where it has to route that traffic to. So a path route rule in the OCI load balancer service consists of a path route string uh, and, a matron, and a pattern match type. Uh, within the path route string, you cannot use statics. Uh, there are uh, four different types of match types. So you have the exact match, which basically looks for a path string that exactly matches the incoming URI path. The fourth longest prefix match, uh, which basically looks for the path string with the best longest match of the beginning portion of the incoming path. Uh, the prefix match, which looks for the path string that matches the beginning portion of the incoming path. Uh, and the suffix match, which looks for the path string that matches the ending portion of the incoming URI path. Uh, the path route rules apply only to HTTP and HTTPS, so they don't apply to the TCP requests. Uh, you can specify up to 20 path routes uh, within a single route set, and you can only specify a single uh, path route set uh, within a, for a, uh, per listener. So the prefix uh, matching uh, has, uh, uh, has the following priority. So you have the exact matching, uh, the force longest prefix match, uh, and then the prefix match or the suffix match. Uh, you also see then when you create a path route rule, there is a order which is associated with the rule that you are creating. Uh, that order of the rules uh, within the path route set does not matter uh, for the exact match and the force longest prefix match. So anywhere they come, they are always uh, triggered first. So the first is exact match and then the force longest prefix match. Uh, but the order does matter if the matching cascades down to a prefix or a suffix matching. So in that case, the order of the rules uh, within the path route will matter and it will be based upon whatever the order is. All right, so moving forward, uh, let's take a look at an example of uh, virtual host name and path route rules applied on a load balancer. So you have a load balancer uh, which has three different listeners. So you have a listener which is a default listener. So there is uh, there's no server virtual host name provided over here uh, and then the default backend set for this default listener is the uh, first backend set over here there is a path route set associated with the listener with this default listener then there is the second listener which has uh, a host name defined as static.foo.com uh, and then in the third listener the host name is defined as static.bar.com in the listener foo, there is no path route set. However, in the listener bar, bar, bar there, is a, 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 there is a path route set. In the path route set, there is an exact match which says that if it's a slash biz, uh, just route the traffic to the bar BES1, so the backend set one. And if it's a slash pass, just route the traffic to bar BES2. So let's take an example that if somebody uh, uh, defines a URL as httpexample.com, so right now, this would be, since it doesn't match to any of the uh, uh, other listeners, it would go to the default listener. So there is a default listener and it would route the traffic to uh, BES1 because uh, there is no path route set or virtual host name associated with it. Uh, for the second example, it says that somebody goes to httpexample.com slash biz. Now in case of, in this case, First, uh, uh, it would check the, from the path route set that where it lands on based upon the first uh, slash biz, it should be routed to BES1. So the traffic would be routed to over here. In the second case, uh, it's the same example.com, but this time the uh, client has uh, gone to the path slash baz. And for this one, it again goes to the PRC, PRS-1, in the PRS-1, this matches to the 
uh, second one over second uh, rule that we have and this rule actually states that route the traffic to the backend set to like the bar BES2. So if, if somebody go, goes to uh, http.foo.com, this actually directly matches to uh, the listener foo and the listener foo's default backend set is the BES1. In case of bar.com, this actually matches the listener bar and the default backend set of listener bar right over here is the BES1. And then the last case is the bar.com slash bas. So in this case, the first uh, match would be on the listener bar, but however, there is also a path route set for this bar as well. So the second option would be to take a look at what are the path route rules saying about it. So slash bars should be forwarded to BES2. So in this case, the traffic would be forwarded to BES2, the bar BES2 uh, backend set. So this is actually uh, now clearly defined that how you can use virtual host names and path route rules to uh, divert your traffic to the uh, uh, required backend servers. OCI load balancer service uh, from a security perspective also uh, supports uh, SSL uh, termination. Uh, so SSL is a secure socket layer uh, security technology uh, which allows you to establish an encrypted link between uh, your client uh, and the server. And within OCI there are three different uh, types of SSL configurations that you can configure. So the first is the SSL termination which basically means that uh, the load balancer handles the incoming SSL traffic and then uh, passes the unencrypted request to the backend server. Uh, so the traffic between the load balancer and the backend server is not encrypted. We also offer end-to-end -end SSL. So in the case of end-to-end -end SSL, the load balancer uh, terminates the SSL connection with the incoming traffic, uh, uh, incoming client, and then initiate another SSL connection to the backend server. And in case of SSL tunneling, uh, if you configure the load balancer uh, listener for uh, TCP traffic, the load balancer tunnels the incoming SSL connections to your application servers. Uh, and, um, and load balancing also supports the TLS 1.2 protocol uh, with a default setting of a strong cipher strength. Uh, the details of that are available in the documentation. So to use uh, SSL with your load balancer, uh, you must add one or more certificate bundles to your system. Uh, the certificate bundle you upload uh, uh, must include the public certificate, uh, the corresponding private key, and any associated certificate authority certificates. Uh, for an easiest workflow, uh, you can upload the certificate bundles you want to use before you actually create the listeners or the backend sets you want to associate with them. Uh, it just makes it easy for you when you are actually going to create your backend server and the listener. The load balancing service uh, also only accepts the X509 uh, type certificates in, in PEMP format. Uh, and in, in the documentation, you, can, you would see that uh, there are uh, certain different commands available if you want to convert them in, from different format into a PEMP format. Uh, one thing to remember over here is that the the load balancing service itself does not generate any SSL certificates. Uh, it only imports an existing certificate that you already own. Uh, and the certificate can be issued by any of the vendors like uh, GoDaddy or VeriSign. Uh, you can also use a self-signed certificate that you generate with an open source tool uh, like OpenSSL uh, or Let's Encrypt. So that actually concludes our uh, the load balancer uh, session. Uh, we went through the uh, session persistence feature, uh, the virtual host name and path based routing feature, and then also the SSL handling by the OCI load balancer. Once again, thank you for joining uh, and see you next time.